Welcome to Introduction to Computer Science, Information Systems. This is Lecture B. The component, Introduction to Computer Science, provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation and structure, structure of programming languages, networking and data communication. It also includes the basic terminology of computing. The learning objectives for this unit, Information Systems, are to define an information system, how one is used, and list examples. Describe the components of an information system. Describe the process for developing an information system. Describe specialized information systems. And explain how information systems are used in healthcare. This lecture focuses on information system development processes. The process of creating new information systems is called systems development. While there exist different models and methodologies for systems development, an institution usually adopts and follows a single standardized systems development process. Regardless of the model, there are essential stages of the systems development process. Systems development encompasses multiple activities that can be broken down into stages. The stages shown on the slide correspond to the Systems Development Life Cycle, or SDLC, model of systems development. Over the next few slides, we will explain each of these stages. The first activity, Systems Planning, involves the initiation of the Information System Project. It starts with identifying the business needs that the system will address. If a new information system is to replace an existing one, then the current system is evaluated to determine to what extent it is already meeting or not meeting the business needs. Anything that is missing will potentially be part of the new system. At this point, the project begins and standard project management goals are determined. The ideas for the new system are narrowed down to a set of features. The budget for the project is set, along with an initial timeline of development. The main objective of the systems analysis is to build the new system's logical model. It starts with requirements modeling. Requirements modeling involves fact-finding, on the basis of which detailed requirements regarding different aspects of a new system are formulated. Those include how the system handles input and output, processes the system will perform, its performance characteristics, and security features. Fact-finding techniques include observation, interviews, surveys, and document review. In addition, research is done to determine if any existing commercial solution can fulfill any of the needs. Often, existing applications can be purchased to fulfill some or all of the software needs. Requirements need to be documented, actionable, measurable, testable, and defined at a level of detail sufficient for system design. The objective of the system's design stage is to determine system specifications that would satisfy all requirements formulated during the previous stage. Systems design starts with a review of the system requirements. Then, different system components are designed. Those include the system interface, its database, software, and hardware architecture. The deliverable of this stage is a blueprint for building the new system. At the system's implementation stage, the new system is built. It involves application development testing, documentation, training, data conversion, system changeover, and post-implementation evaluation. Application development is the process of writing the programs and code modules. Analysts and programmers use traditional structured or object-oriented methods to translate the design into a functioning application. Testing is performed throughout the system's implementation phase. Accurate documentation describes the information system and helps the users, managers, and information technology, or IT staff, by increasing the usability of the system, reducing errors, and improving productivity. The success of the system's development effort depends on whether or not people understand the system and know how to use it effectively. No system can be successful without proper training for users, managers, and IT staff members. Training can be provided by vendors, outside training firms, or IT staff, and other in-house resources. Data conversion is the critical process of loading existing data into the new system. Because data is extremely vulnerable at this stage, this should be automated, if possible, with strict management and maintenance of input controls during the conversion process. System changeover is the process of putting the new information system online and retiring the old system. Before the system changeover can occur, the new system must be tested and documented carefully, users must be trained, and existing data must be converted. The changeover can happen quickly or slowly, depending on the method used. Rect cutover, parallel operation, pilot operation, and phased operation are examples of changeover methods. 
Although these methods are not covered here in depth, they provide an indication of the complexity of systems implementation. After the new system is operational, a post-implementation evaluation of the results is made as part of the final report to management. This evaluation examines all aspects of the development effort and the end product. The final report to management includes the following. Final versions of all system documentation. All planned modifications and enhancements to the system that have been identified. A recap of all systems development costs and schedules and comparison of actual costs and schedules to the original estimates. And an assessment of the overall quality of the information system. The final stage of systems development is systems support and security. After the information system is deployed, there must be resources in place for supporting it over time and making sure that it is secure. User support helps system users perform the tasks they need to accomplish with the system. Maintenance refers to updating the system to address any errors or problems that arise and to add new features. Finally, security ensures that the system is properly protected. There are many different methodologies for developing information systems, several of which will be discussed here. One of them, the SDLC, we just described. It is a waterfall model in that its stages are implemented sequentially, with the output of one stage becoming the input for the next stage. Strictly following this sequence requires much planning up front, with little flexibility left for changes during the later stages. Waterfall models are rarely used nowadays because it has become common practice to allow for feedback and iteration during the development stages. Incremental and iterative development methods attempt to address the inflexibility of the waterfall method by focusing on smaller sub-problems and or by repeating stages to allow for more flexibility. For example, the spiral approach consists of a series of iterations and revisions based on user feedback. Prototyping refers to developing successively more complex prototypes of the system until the system is built. This process can be used in tandem with the spiral approach so that each prototype is evaluated, which then affects the design of the next prototype. Here are diagrams showing the process of development using the waterfall method, the spiral method, and prototyping in conjunction with the spiral method. The diagram of the waterfall method displays its linear, sequential nature, while the spiral and prototyping methods diagrams represent the iterative approach of these models. There are other systems development methodologies that are currently popular. Joint Application Development, or JAD, focuses on team-based fact-finding, which can be used during only one phase of the development process. It is a popular, user-oriented technique for fact-finding and requirements modeling. It is not associated with any specific development methodology. It is used whenever group input and interaction are desired. JAD allows system developers and users to develop requirements collaboratively instead of relying on limited user interviews. Rapid Application Development, or RAD, is a more compressed version of the full systems development process. RAD refers to software development methodology that uses rapid prototyping. Users are involved at every step by participating in prototyping, writing test cases, and performing unit testing. Agile development methods are currently popular. They are very similar to RAD in that they stress intense interaction between system developers and users. There are many different agile development methods. Most promote development, teamwork, collaboration, and process adaptability throughout the life cycle of the project. Agile methods break tasks into small increments with minimal planning and do not directly involve long-term planning. Testing and evaluation of an information system's performance occurs throughout all stages of its development. In the beginning, the project is evaluated for feasibility. As the development process continues, requirements are evaluated for completeness and appropriateness. The designs are evaluated using simple prototypes. Most system development methodologies used today require iterative development with repetitive testing and evaluation at each stage. After the system is implemented, the software and the entire system can be tested. The testing process can be summarized as follows. Create a test plan. Determine test cases and test dataset. Execute the test cases, which includes the building of a testing environment and automation of the execution of test cases, and fix the bugs, if any, and retest the code and repeat as necessary. A test case is a formal or informal set of conditions or variables under which a tester can identify issues and determine if the application or software system is working correctly. Test cases should cover all possible scenarios under which the system may operate. 
Test cases should be designed to verify the system meets the business and functional requirements specified, and verify that the system meets performance standards. With formal test cases, there must be at least two test cases for each requirement, one positive test and one negative test, to determine that all requirements of an application are met. Written test cases include a description of the functionality to be tested and the preparation required to ensure that the test can be conducted. A formal written test case is characterized by a known input and by an expected output, which is worked out before the test is executed. For applications or systems without formal requirements, informal test cases are written based on the accepted normal operation of programs of a similar class. Sometimes test cases are not written at all, but the activities and results are reported after the tests have been run. A test plan is needed to ensure all possible scenarios have been tested, successful outcomes recognized, and problems corrected. The test plan is developed as the system is being designed. This ensures that all of the features and functionality are fully tested, and that all the requirements are met. This slide shows a list of some of the items often included in a test plan. Those are testing goals, key areas of focus, testing deliverables, how tests will run, list of items to test, roles and responsibilities, prerequisites, environment, assumptions, what to do when a test is successful, and what to do when a test fails. A unit is the smallest piece of testable code. Unit testing identifies and eliminates runtime or execution errors that make the program stop abnormally, and the logic errors, incorrect results, that might not have been caught during the design phase. The main purpose of unit testing is to take the smallest piece of testable software in the application and isolate it from all other code to determine whether it performs as expected. Integration, or link testing, comes into play right after unit testing. Two or more previously tested units are combined into a component and the interface between them is tested. More units are combined and interfaces tested until the full product is tested at once. System testing focuses on the system as a whole and is often performed by a dedicated testing team. System testing uses real-life scenarios to ensure all functions and features of the system will work when it finally goes live. System testing also includes verification and validation of both the business requirements and the application architecture. It is intended to assure users, developers, and managers that the programs meet all specifications and that all necessary features have been included. System integration testing extends system testing to include testing the system in the environment where it will run. This includes running the system along with other software. This leads to user acceptance testing, where the system is finally tested by the users against the requirements defined in the analysis and design phases. There are many different types of testing. Every institution determines which testing is to be done based on the system specifics. A sanity test or sanity check quickly evaluates whether a claim or the result of a calculation can possibly be true. The point is not to catch every possible error, but to rule out certain classes of obviously false results. In computer science, a sanity test is a brief run-through of the functionality of a computer program, system, calculation, or other analysis to ensure that the system or methodology works as expected. This is often done prior to a more exhaustive round of testing. Load testing refers to testing the system under high load conditions where there are several applications running with intensive network and memory demands. The load is so high that errors are expected to occur. Determining the maximum load that an application can handle without errors is part of the testing. Also, load testing helps identify bottlenecks. Stress testing is similar to load testing, but the capacity is pushed even higher and beyond what would ever be expected for the system. Like load testing, stress testing is used to determine the breaking point of the system and to observe what occurs. Exploratory testing is used to find out how the system performs under a wide range of conditions and tasks. Installation testing is a type of quality assurance work that focuses on what customers will need to do to install and set up the new system successfully. Recovery testing shows how well an application is able to recover from crashes, hardware failures, and other exceptions. During recovery testing, the system is deliberately made to fail, and then its response to the failure is evaluated. Reliability testing tries to discover the specific point at which failure occurs. Regression testing uncovers software errors by partially retesting a modified program. It provides a general assurance that no additional errors were introduced in the process of fixing other problems. 
Regression testing methods include rerunning previous tests and checking whether previously fixed errors have reemerged. Without regression testing, it is difficult to find or see how a change in one part of the system affects other parts. Scalability testing measures the capability to scale or increase the user load, number of transactions, amount of data, etc. Performance, scalability, and reliability are often considered together by software quality analysts. Security testing evaluates the security measures of an information system. It ensures that only authorized users can access the system. Systems support and security involves user support, systems maintenance and security, physical security, backup and recovery, and system obsolescence. We'll discuss these topics in the next few slides. The objective in providing user training is maximizing the productivity. The Help Desk is a centralized resource staffed by IT professionals who provide users with support. The Help Desk has three main objectives. To explain how to use system resources efficiently, to provide answers to technical or operational questions, and to provide a contact point when users need information or assistance. The Help Desk does not replace traditional IT maintenance and support activities. Instead, Help Desks enhance productivity and improve utilization of a company's information resources. Besides functioning as the connection between IT staff and users, the Help Desk is a central contact point for all IT maintenance activities. The Help Desk is where users report system problems, ask for maintenance, and submit new systems requests. Systems maintenance includes various forms of changes and updates required to keep a computer system running properly. Maintenance includes repairing, replacing, or moving physical hardware, updating existing software, and installing new software and security updates. Maintenance is performed on a regular or semi-regular schedule, often during non-peak usage hours. Occasionally, a system may need unscheduled emergency maintenance. This usually happens when there is a hardware or software failure that needs immediate attention. Emergency updates may also be required for recently released security updates. Maintenance tasks can be classified as corrective, adaptive, and preventative. Corrective maintenance diagnoses and fixes problems in an operational system. It includes, but is not limited to, the finding and fixing of logic errors, replacing defective network cabling, restoring proper configuration settings, program code debugging, driver updates, and installation of software patches. Adaptive maintenance concerns modification of an operational system to ensure it continues to run as the external environment changes. This type of maintenance adapts the system to changing requirements such as a new or upgraded operating system, hardware platform, compiler, software library, or database structure. It does not add functionality, it only allows the system to continue working in the altered environment. One example on a web page is when an originally working link suddenly gets a page not found message. Adaptive maintenance would be updating the link so that the changed page can be seen. Preventative maintenance helps avoid problems by analyzing areas where trouble is most likely to occur. Preventative maintenance is usually performed because a potential problem or security threat has been recognized with a computer or server and the system administrators are working to deal with the issue before it becomes a true problem. Security is a crucial component of all systems. It involves several aspects. One is information security. Another aspect of security is physical security. As the name suggests, it is the protection of physical assets such as computer systems, network hardware, and storage media. This is not just protection from intruders, it also includes protection from natural causes such as fire and floods. For operation center security, physical access must be tightly controlled and each entrance must be equipped with appropriate security devices, such as ID badges or biometric scanning systems. Secure operating systems, locks, backups, tracking software, engraving, and stringent passwords all help to guard servers, desktop computers, and notebook, laptop, and tablet computers. For network traffic security, data can be encrypted. Encrypted data has been encoded so it cannot be accessed without authorization. Wireless networks, private networks, virtual private networks, ports and services, firewalls, and network intrusion detection also fall under the umbrella of network security. Application security requires an understanding of services, hardening, application permissions, input validation techniques, software patches and updates, and software logs. Security hardening is configuring components and developing applications in such a way as to prevent, block, or mitigate different forms of attack. 
This hardening process makes systems more secure by removing unnecessary accounts, services, and features. Computer configuration settings, users' personal information, and other sensitive data are stored in files. File security means keeping files safe and protected and is a crucial part of any computer security program. User security involves the identification of system users and allowing access to the system by the appropriate users. Identity management relates to the controls and procedures needed for identification of legitimate users and system components. Passwords help keep a system secure when they are long, complex, private, and changed often. Procedural or operational security deals with managerial policies and controls that ensure secure operations. Computer systems need provisions for backup and recovery. Backup is the copying of data, and system security includes developing backup policies and procedures. An effective backup policy will help a company continue business operations and survive a catastrophe. The backup policy needs to specify the types of backups, backup media, and retention periods. There are four types of backups. Full backups copy everything and are time-consuming and redundant if most files have not changed since the last backup. Differential backups take copies of only the files that have changed or are new. Incremental backups copy just those files that have never been backed up by any method. Continuous backup is a real-time streaming method that records all system activity as it occurs. It requires expensive hardware, software, and substantial network capacity. Backup media includes hard drives, optical storage, and online storage. Retention periods are set for a specific amount of time, depending on company policy and legal requirements. Backups are stored for the specific retention period after which they are destroyed or the backup media is reused. Backup policies may also specify the number of backups required and the location of the backup copies. Some systems are required to have two or more backups, with at least one of the backup copies residing off-site, a certain distance from the system. This helps ensure that at least one backup survives a natural or man-made disaster, such as an earthquake or a fire. Recovery is the restoration of data and restart of the system after an interruption. A disaster recovery plan is part of the overall backup and recovery strategy in place to respond to a potential disaster. Eventually, it is no longer cost-effective to support and maintain an information system. All systems degrade over time and or just become obsolete. Maintenance costs begin to increase. New technology offers a way to perform the same or additional functions more efficiently, or users start to ask for more features and capability. New system requests are submitted, and the system development process begins again. This concludes Lecture B of Information Systems. In summary, the systems development process includes several activities such as planning, analysis, design, implementation, support, and security. There are different models for how this process is implemented. For example, the waterfall model executes each activity completely before continuing to the next activity. Other models, such as the spiral model, allow for more incremental feedback and iterative development between phases. Testing is part of all phases of the systems development process. Initial plans and designs are tested, as well as the system itself once it is implemented. Testing occurs at the unit level, where units are small parts of the system, and on the system as a whole. Systems, support, and security ensures that the system is used effectively and securely once it is implemented.